Hello, my sister. Although we're not biological sisters, but I feel like you're my sister. Sister Robin, the attorney, Robin Smith, my sister. I am so glad to, to have met you over two years ago. And when I met you, you were super duper duper pregnant. Oh, yeah. Yeah. And I was with a friend who I call my little sister. And my role with her was to come to court with her. I knew what was going on, but not much, but just knew as a friend and somebody that loved her. And so I'm going to support her. And I felt that my role was to pray, to just sit there and pray and support. And when I walked in the little room, it was so much love and warmth. The young lady from Legal Aid, I don't remember her name, but I was like, I wanted to shout because I'm an emotional person. She is the sweetest lady and she is a no-nonsense lady. I forget her name. Um, I don't remember her name, but she's not from Louisville or from this country. But I was like, oh my God, this Mirth, I won't say her name. She's on the right side. She's got people. And then you treated me so nice, which is not the norm. I've had the opportunity to be in and out of the court at least twice a month for 18 years. And in the 80s regarding my brother's death and other things. So attorneys, they're professional, but normally they're not personable. They're not, but my God. I was like, these are the nicest people I've ever met in my life. And they let me come in the little room because you don't get to go in the little room. And then when they come out, they treat, I'm just talking about my experience. And so I'm in awe. Then when we went in the courthouse, your sweet, sweet person, just a lamb and a sweet, girl, you flipped it to a lion. <laughs> I was like, oh my God, what is this? And it was amazing to see how you operated in love and you didn't treat Marisu, you didn't treat her like she was a client. You touched her, you pat her hand, you loved on her. I get emotional because I love her. And I and I I've, I've never seen anybody like you in my life. And if God allows, I'll be 66 next month and I've never met anybody that was so conscientious and compassionate. Then, girl, you messed around. I remember when the baby was born, my friend told me, and you stayed in touch with her. And then I'm just telling you what I know about you and so much more. And then after that, you was changing firms. You contacted her and she told me, I was at her house and I love her. She said, where she goes, I'm going. And I was like, oh my God. Because you know her, so I'm just, mm. so thank you. I had no idea that I would be able to talk out loud as much as I'm talking now to an attorney because normally they are just straight to the point. And, um, you know, I've been on both sides, all sides. But so, girl, you one of a kind, I ain't lying. So, anywho, thank you. That's really nice of you to say. I, I do want to say for other members of my profession, a lot of times, yeah, they do really lock in and they get focused. Uh, because when you've got a job to do, you just have to do it. So they don't mean to ever be unpersonable, I don't think. It's just the intense focus does make a lot of people seem really aloof and unapproachable. But you're right. When you do have a bond with a client or when you feel really strongly about a case, that comes through and it can't help it. It's going to come through. Yes, ma'am. And that's who you are. Did you see how you just did that? That's who you are to the heart. You're so personable and caring. And I've never, you know, felt any way about anybody because I didn't expect. But you were, so I'm not trying to blow your head. I'm just speaking the truth from what I know. Oh, oh I, <laughs> oh my God. Back is always welcome. But yeah, I did. Yes, ma'am. Yeah, Thank yeah. you. One <laughs> question I'd love to ask everybody is your first memory of a heart smile. Because internal smiles, are so different from external. When I saw how you operated and you could do what you did, I was like, my God, I wonder what an internal, your first memory of a heart smile. Um, probably, probably my big sister. My big sister. She, uh, she's been around uh, since before I was born. So uh, I don't have a memory of a time in my childhood where I didn't have her. And 
she was as when we were children she was my protector she's a very fierce and bold personality so it's you know it, being in her protection and growing up I want to say in her shadow just because she's such a big personality it it gives you a confidence and an ability to be yourself and that it'll be okay and when you have that kind of person in your life could be a sister could be a, a friend or a, a parent you just experience life a little differently you don't quite have the fear so as far as a heart smile as i think you mean it uh, it would be around her praise god that's wonderful yes ma'am because heart smiles can always make you smile no matter what season you're in they can just come up through life and a smile. That's wonderful. So Sister Robin, I'm calling you Sister on purpose because I mean, I connected when I saw you and I'm, man, but anyway, what, and I don't even know. I just know you're good at what you do. So what kind of attorney are you? <laughs> and what led you into whatever? So I didn't find out there were different fields until recently, as specific as they are. So what type of attorney are, what's your field? I'm a civil rights and specifically employment attorney. I usually represent people in the context of their jobs and they're having a problem with their job or they've been separated from their job. And then this year, more than any other year in the past, I'm doing a lot of representing people in the unemployment context because that there's a big need for that right now. Wow. Yes, ma'am. Wow. So when you were younger, did you like to debate or... You enjoyed a good, I don't want to say argument or a debate. Did you grow up showing your side of what you believe to be right? Yeah, and, and I'd, I'd use the word argument or debate. I was on DuPont Manual High School's debate team all four wow. years of high school, and I loved it. Absolutely loved it. Learned how to take apart your ideas and put them back together in a, a form that people could follow and understand and then once you got that part down the argument part then there's a stylizing that comes into it where you can make it something you can connect to and try to convince other people that they should feel connected to it as well and that's not that part of it was not something I was good at in high school I did the here's a logical reason why you should agree with me period end and I was I was back then much more rigid in my thinking where I didn't really understand people who didn't understand my point of view already that couldn't just hear my words and be convinced so it took a lot of living to understand that persuading people and people feeling persuaded it's very much emotional and that people need to care about something where they'll be motivated to do something about it. Oh, wow. That's deep. Hey, man, because I've seen you do that. I, I just didn't, you know, I, I went into that with my friend thinking this is impossible. Uh, you know, up against such a huge operation, I'm thinking, but it's sweet that she took the case. It really is, but there's no way that it was, it, I'm in awe. So tell me, who are who's a hero you have or had and why is that person a hero to you if you could pick a person oh boy <laughs> you know you could ask me that question every day for a year and i'd probably have a different answer every day because there's so much to admire and there are so many people who just have um so much persistence so and you know, she's on my mind now because she passed away last week. Mm -hmm. uh, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, because she was brave, of course, and also because she didn't take the cases that were sure things. She didn't take the cases that were easy and that she didn't take the cases that were going to make her rich. She took cases where she could make a difference and that is really impressive to me. So as far as, as being a hero goes, she's a name that you know. 
but I'm sure the other 364 days a year, I'd probably say names that you don't know because some of the people who work the hardest and are the most effective are people who, they're not really sung heroes. Yes. You know, so everybody from my, my first grade teacher at Coleridge Taylor uh, to the woman at uh, First Presbyterian Church who um, would give us hugs every day when we came in for child care. Those people are the ones who they make the world real, even if you've never read about them in a history book and their impact goes on and on. So as far as heroes, those are people that, that matter a lot to me. Wow. That is so encouraging because that's who you, you see the value in everybody. And I don't know you know you, but I know you from watching you. And this is where I might get emotional. Back in March, I ran home from my job because I'm in that population. My husband has COPD. I just ran home. And then feeling a little weary and weary. And then you on your post, because I follow you, you had, you showcased your neighbor, Bob. And he was playing the circle be unbroken. Girl, I sobbed and cried and cried. And then you had him another time doing peace in the valley. I was no good. I mean, I was just like, okay, I've got hope. I'm going to be okay. And then um, it's going to be all right. Because it's like this, I couldn't imagine how busy you could be. But you took time to showcase Bob. And he encouraged many through the device here. So with you being in so many arenas and having so many people, how do you disconnect or do you ever disconnect? Because you disconnected me that day from my worry and my concern because I'm a grandmother, I'm a great grandmother, I can't be worried on the outside. And then that, who, who? So how do you keep the nasty out of your heart? How do you guard your heart from, I don't even know what my question is, girl, how do you stay encouraged? I I don't think you do keep that part. I don't think you try to take a part of yourself and amputate it. You have to love those parts of yourself that you're not proud of. And I've got plenty of those parts myself. Uh, so the part that is um, petty, the part that's selfish, the part that can't let something go, the part that doesn't want to forgive, that part needs care too. And it's odd that you bring up Bob because he is somebody who can help tap into that in my life. Bob, um, and this is, this is nothing that he wouldn't mind me sharing with you. He's my neighbor. He used to go sing at nursing homes. So that's where he has a whole set, several of them. I think he has said he has like 26 programs. He has an Elvis program and a gospel program. He's got what he calls oldies. And he used to go sing those to people. And then with COVID, that's not, that's not uh, really workable. And he has also been diagnosed with leukemia. Mm -hmm. so he can't go anywhere and see people. And so everybody quarantining, it was really hard for him. And when we figured out that he could bring out his karaoke equipment and sing on his front yard, that gave him a way to share his gift with people. So bringing it back to that, the part of yourself that, that needs nourishment, that needs to heal, that's hurting, bring that part too. Bring your whole self and say, I feel bad and I don't want to mm. instead of I'm going to pretend to be, and it's not about choosing to be a person who's not hurting. It's you can pretend. And in that time that you're pretending, you're also becoming a little bit dishonest and that yeah. hurt upon hurt upon hurt. Or you can just say, I don't feel good and I want to. And it's been my experience in life that if you reach out, somebody will take your hand. And even if it's just a neighbor who says, I'm lonely and I want to share wow. some company with you in the best way that I can, given the circumstances, that 
is, is part of how you can heal. Wow. Being something for somebody else can help you heal at the same time. And is it a, a, a complete instant heal? No, it's not. But you got to be patient with yourself. Mm. Sometimes things aren't going to feel bad. Um, well, they're not going to feel good immediately, but you just have to keep trying. This has been a year for a lot of people to hurt, a whole lot of people to hurt. So there are a lot of opportunities, a lot of opportunities. Yes, I don't, I've got an echo. I don't know where this is coming from, but I won't worry about it. <laughs> you have helped me immensely. How would you advise a 16 year old you in this atmosphere that we're in now, or a 16 year old young lady dealing with the protests, the COVID, the this, the, how, what advice could you give a 16 year old? You know, what's really interesting is I was 16 years old in the 90s, and he, we grew up seeing the footage of the LA riots, and we were told not to believe our eyes in mm -hmm. what was on the video of the Rodney King beating, but instead, there's a lot you don't know. We were told that this is an aberration. This happened to him, but it doesn't tend to happen to people. And as long as people do right, they'll be fine. And we didn't really, when you're 16, you don't have a frame of reference to know that that's not true. You don't have the ability to um, change your perspective and your experience because you are where you are. But then you get a little bit older and you choose to have